am Diana, and I'm here to recap Survivor South Pacific, Episode 10. So the show opens up with Ozzy, Jim, and Keith talking at Redemption Island about how Coach is going to win this entire thing. And Ozzy says, well, I hate to tell you guys I told you so, but I told you so. And I'm thinking, what in the hell did you tell them? The brilliant idea about getting yourself sent to Redemption Island in the first place? Whatever, Ozzy. So then we get to see a scene of Coach teaching Cochran how to do his dragon sail stuff. So anyhow, that's interesting. But Coach reveals some of his insecurities about Albert and reassures Cochran that he's not number seven on the list. And Cochran feels good for a few minutes. Then we go to the duel, and it's Jim, Keith, and Ozzy. And they have to hold on the top of their hands two planks of wood up in the air, and there's a plank at the top. So when the planks they're holding are um, moved, they fall down. First person to lose their planks is out. Goes to jury. Jim is the first one out. Keith is the second one out. Ozzy wins. Victorious. Anyhow, before the duel or during the duel, Brandon's cheering for Jim. A couple people are cheering for Jim. Whitney, the, you know, love-struck married woman, is cheering for Keith. And um, nobody is cheering for Ozzy, and that empowers him. So he wins the duel. Off Jim and Keith go to um, the jury. So then we get this magical trip to Ozzy land. It's called Redemption Island, but it's really just like Ozzy's Disney, you know, reefs to swim in. He's got big old honking fish he's eating and he's talking about how he is being rejuvenated and they're in there you know having to worry about who's going to stab them in the back and it wears you down and they're not eating as much and he's going to come back into this game better than ever and just you know be ready for the end and he happens this is great this is just such great survivor stuff he happens to climb upon a coconut tree palm tree whatever it is and he's throwing down coconuts and then he gets to the very top and he's standing atop this palm tree, coconut tree, whatever it is, surveying his kingdom, and magically, a helicopter comes by to get the beautiful aerial view of Ozzy on top, surveying his kingdom. Very, very funny in my opinion. Oh, no, nothing's ever, you know, arranged with the players on Survivor. How about, how about Ozzy? Why, why don't you climb the top of that tree and stand up there like you're the king of the world and we'll send a helicopter by and get the aerial shot. You think that didn't happen? I do. So then they go to the immunity challenge. Now the immunity challenge is fairly straightforward. You got this bean bag. You set it on your head. On top of the bean bag you set a bowl full of rice. You go Walk up a plank that's a seesaw, walk down the plank, walk up another one, walk down it, dump your rice into your bowl. You can never touch the bowl, and if it falls off, you have to go back to the start. The only real contenders in this thing right at during the game were Brandon, Sophie, and Don, and a little bit of Coach. The rest of them couldn't keep the stupid bowl of rice on their heads if their lives depended on it. And Cochran, you took one look at Cochran in this thing, you went, he ain't getting it. So, um... The Brandon and Dawn and Sophie are pretty much neck and neck. Sophie does something really smart. She fills that bowl full. It's mounded over the top. And she manages to get up the seesaw, down the seesaw, up the seesaw, down, and dump it in. And she makes it in three trips and wins immunity for the first time for herself. So you go, Sophie. So the next thing we see are deals between Cochran and Dawn talking about how they're would be willing to shake things up a little bit. Well, because Dawn is desperate at this point. Dawn is not willing to deal when she has an immunity idol. When she doesn't, she's all open for new things. She's no joke, though, when it comes to competitions. Then Albert is talking with Dawn and Whitney about possibly getting Edna out. Now, last week, they really played up in the promos that Albert is going against the family. And... Um, so he had some serious talks, but never made any commitments. And the one thing i got to say about Albert, mm, 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 mm. he's sitting there with his glasses on and his blue button-up shirt is open, and all I want to do is be a secretary taking dictation from him. That man is too fine to be on an island with no, you know, manscaping or anything. He's just good-looking. And so he's got that blue shirt open where you can see all 18 of his packs and 
I'm just like, yep, that's pretty good stuff there. So they go to immunity and they're talking about whether or not to shake things up. We don't know the conclusion of what Albert has talked about with Edna. They, you know, about voting off Edna, get down to it. And of course they all vote out Dawn, who goes to Redemption Island. Now, on the spot, there's an immunity challenge right there at Tribal Council. It's a block A, B, C, and D, and true and false. And you're going to have to answer questions. My daughter looks at me goes, and says, wow, that's a competition Cochran can win. And I'm like, yeah, it is. So, so what happens? Cochran goes out in question number two. Harvard, seriously, Harvard, and you can't get true, false, Cochrane, come on. It was tailor-made. This here we go. Dork who can't win anything. Let's give him a true-false. He's gone to Harvard. Maybe he can win this. And no, he's out on question number two. Even Coconuts for Brains was doing better than that. So, it's down to Sophie and Whitney. Whitney is the one in danger. If Whitney wins, then they have to vote one of their own, which would probably have been Cochrane off but Sophie wins immunity for the second time in a row on the same day and Whitney is voted off the island. So they've wiped out Savai and all that's left are the Apulu members plus Cochran. Now it's game on. They're going to have to start cannibalizing each other and this is where it's going to get interesting. Who's going to align with who? Is Albert going to lead one side and coach lead the other? And what will happen as this family who is stuck together very well ends up having to choose who to go home. The promos say that Brandon's in trouble, but we'll see. Now, a couple things I want to talk about. There's this guy, and I'm going to show you a picture of him right now. His name is Rick. Once in a while, you'll see him, like, cross the screen, and on very, very rare occasions, you'll actually hear him speak. It's so rare. He's not actually a member of the tribe. He's an extra that Survivor has, Mark Burnett has hired to just, like, fill in scenes, in my opinion, because I don't get what he's doing on this island. Albert's concerned with Edna. Everybody's concerned with Edna. She's not really playing the game. What's Rick doing? Can someone please explain Rick to me? I'm not quite getting it. Um, Ozzy. Ozzy's sitting at Redemption Island thinking to himself, <laughs> I've got this thing licked. I'm against Dawn and Whitney. He's pretty sure he's coming back in the game. We'll see how that turns out. You know, Don's no joke when it comes to challenges either. She's uh, quite competitive for her age and and everything. I, I think she might give him a run for his money. <clears throat> this is Survivor, a recap. I hope I've covered it all. Have a great night.